Purdue has arrived. We're joined now by Lance Jones, Fletcher lawyer, Zach Eady, and head coach Matt Painter from Purdue. We'll ask coach to open things up with a statement, then we'll take questions for student athletes first. Coach. Yeah, obviously, um, you know, very competitive game. I, I thought um, both teams' defense was way better than their offense. Um, I think especially in the second half, I thought our guys did a really good job defending in the second half. With that being said, I thought NC State, you know, holding us to 28 points in the second half did a good job also. Um, it was just one of those grinder type games where, you know, we made a few more shots than them, made enough threes, and um, obviously wanted to keep establishing Zach inside and uh, kind of playing off of that in terms of, they were doing some different things with him and just making the right decision and then being able to attack at that point or take the threes that we were given. But um, we made enough of those. But I, I thought our defense was was really good in the second half. We didn't have any breakdowns. We had, in my opinion, we had too many breakdowns um, in that first half defensively. Anytime we had those breakdowns with that one stretch, it seemed like they scored. So, but I thought we were very competitive, that we played hard. We just didn't play great. I don't think either team played great. You know, if you kind of look at their run to get here and our run to get here, both teams were way better offensively than you saw today. But that happens in basketball at times. So you got to give our guys credit for hanging in there and grinding one out. Really, we've grinded it out the last two games. Um, but, you know, when it's freewheeling and you're scoring the basketball, it's more enjoyable to watch. It's more enjoyable to play. It's more enjoyable to coach. But to win a championship and get six games and be able to win six games, you're going to have a couple games in there a game or two to where you just don't play as well offensively and you got to find a way to win that so congrats to our guys for finding a way to do that first question for the student athletes is going to come in the front row second chair in hand the microphone to to your left thank you uh hey guys uh arash mandani from sportsnet canada zach you made the decision to come back uh this year to now be one win away one game away playing monday night means what to you at this at this point yeah, I mean, this, this game is what we've been talking about all year. Um, it's the reason I came back is playing games like these. Um, you know, I, really the reason I've been playing college basketball for four years. Like, we talk about this every year, and, and to finally get to this game um, is it, big time. And then we got to obviously keep going and keep playing. Um, but, yeah, it's, these are the games you, you come back for, and these are the games that you, you play for and you work and you practice every day for. Continuing with questions for the student athletes up front, Zach. Uh, Zach Brazilian near a post for Zach and Fletcher. Could you just, you know, describe what it feels like to be in the title game after obviously last year losing the first round to <coughs> come back and now, you know, kind of bury those demons obviously and to be 40 minutes from winning it all. We'll ask Fletcher to take that first, then Zach. Fletcher. Uh, it's everything. It's everything we've worked for. Everything we've thought about. A lot of, a lot of late nights. Can't even sleep because you're thinking about it. It's, um, it's been tough, but we fought, and uh, we're going to keep fighting. We got 40 more minutes till we're national champs, so uh, we're going to push everybody as, as far as we can, and we're going to play as hard as we can. And Zach. Yeah, um, like you said, it's, it's a really big deal, but uh, obviously we still have, we still have a, game, a game to play. Um, uh, like no one, no one's celebrating right now. We're, we're going to keep locked in, keep, um, keep focusing on these games plans, and uh, get back to work. Up front on the left side, Fanta. I'll go to Lance with this one, John Fanta, Fox Sports. Lance, as Coach said, this wasn't always the, the prettiest game. Uh, you supplied some big-time shots for your team in this one, but what does it say about this team that maybe when it's not the most glamorous game, you guys can still outwill the other team with your defense and with your toughness? Yeah, uh, it says a lot about our team. Um, you know, every, every win is not going to be, you know, nice and pretty. Um, this one happened to be grinded out. Uh, you know, we stuck with it. You know, they made runs. Uh, we had dead periods, but most importantly, we, we, we stayed with it. And, you know, we got necessary stops down the stretch. Toward the back of the room in the center. Uh, Kevin Sweeney, uh, Sports Illustrated, for, for Lance and Fletcher. Um, you know, the confidence that you guys elevated on, on some of those threes, especially in the second half, to, to put them away. Uh, I'm curious maybe what that says about the personality of this group and the way that you guys 
uh, believe in yourselves in these big moments? We'll ask Lance to take that first, then Fletcher. Lance. Yeah, um, I think it just, it's about repetition. I, mean, I know me and Fletcher, we get in the gym extra. Uh, we shoot after bad games, after good games. The work stays the same. Um, you know, we don't, we don't want to shy from moments like this. You know, we worked our whole lives to be in this position. And um, I think it's just about having confidence. And uh, I, I can speak for me and my, my uh, Fletcher that we have a lot of confidence right now. And Fletcher? Yeah, we've just done too much to not shoot it with confidence. Um, <laughs> it's been, we've played basketball for so many years. Now we're on the stage that we've worked for. This is uh, why we play. And uh, there's, there's no reason for us to go out there non-confident or not trusting one another to go make a play. Up front to the left, second row. Yeah, um, Adi Joseph, CBS. Uh, Zach, you played 40 today. Did you expect to play 40 today? And what's it going to take to come out of the title game? Um, I don't know if I expected it, but I was ready for it. I'm going to be ready for it every game. Um, like, it's, like, I, like I've said all, um, all weekend now, like you never want to come up the game. Like No one on the team wants to come up the game. Um, obviously, if paint subs us, we're going to sub. But if you can play every minute of the game, you want to play every minute of the game. You want to play every second of the game. Um, so I'm never going to complain about uh, paint leaving me on the floor. Final question for the student athletes before they go back to the locker room up front. Uh, Zach, they uh, seem like they brought a lot of different looks to you, had some turnovers that are kind of uncharacteristic and such. But uh, when how how did you handle try to handle what they were doing with you defensively? Yeah, they, they threw a lot of different looks at me. Um, I have to kind of be more, be more ready for it. I think I tried to force it a few times, and that led to some bad um, offensive possessions for us. Uh, but obviously, kind of just when they when they keep going, you kind of get the rhythm and you get the flow and you understand it. And I think in, towards the end of the game, there you kind of kind of picked it up and I kind of understood what they were doing and uh, we kind of made that run there. We want to thank Lance Fletcher and Zach for joining us here in the main interview room. They're going to head back to the locker room and join their teammates. The Purdue locker room remains open, and we're going to take questions for Coach Painter. Let's begin up front with Adam. Hey, Matt. Congratulations. Adam Zagori, NJ.com. Just, I guess, after losing the last few years to double-digit seeds, how satisfying is this for you and your guys? And uh, you know, what does it mean in the light of what's happened? I mean, obviously, if you look at their their run and who they've beaten, you know, Duke, Marquette, obviously Oakland beat, um, you know, Kentucky. They beat a good Texas Tech team that got third in the Big 12. Um, you know, pretty impressive run. You know, so for us to be able to beat them, no matter what their seat is, I think they proved that they belong. And the thing that we just tried to sell more than anything is that we weren't facing that team that was 17 and 14 at one time. We're facing the team that's 9 and 0. But um, just getting a win without any of the particulars is, is worth it, right? To be able to advance. And um, I always talk about that about trying to win a Big Ten championship. So everybody like wants to talk about winning it. And I said, man, you got to get yourself in position before you can win one. And so it's like winning a national championship. Like you can talk all you want, but if you're not gonna play on Monday, you don't have a chance. And so obviously we put ourselves in a position, you know, to win one and, you know, you gotta give our guys credit, man. Our guys have been able to battle back, but they've also, you know, been, been able to handle a lot of adversity. Up front to the right, Arash. Hey Matt, Arash Medania from Sportsnet Canada. It, it was interesting after the Elite Eight, all the emotion, all the joy, Robbie Hummel, Zach with the explosion. Today you punch your ticket to Monday night. It was so much more muted from the guys. What, what does that tell you about the yeah. mindset that they have going into this and, and just the dichotomy kind of from last Sunday to tonight? Yeah, you know, we didn't, we talked about not getting caught up, you know, and not jumping over the fight and being able to compete and keep our composure. And, you know, it's when you deal with a team that's a good shooting team, Sometimes, like when they miss shots, it's like the end of the world. Like, how can I miss shots? Like, how can I do this? Um, we're we, the number one three-point field goal percentage team in the country. So sometimes our body language, just if we miss shots, we can still win the game. You know, and obviously you want to make those shots, right? It just kind of depends on how the game flows. But, yeah, it was pretty emotional to, to go through that. But every team who's playing has to be, you know, has to go through that. You know, you had one team that's been through it. They are national champs. And so they, they have that experience where the rest of us do not have that experience. So, you know, you don't want to be emotional at that time and then not go out there and play and play to your strengths. And I thought our guys did a good job handling that. We're going to go to the center of the room. Hey, Matt, Mark McClune, 3TV CBS 5 here in Phoenix. Hey, wondering, you mentioned the offense not being uh, what you'd hoped it would be. 
Um, given the, the sight lines and just the amount of people inside the arena, how much of an effect do you think that had on just the offensive flow? I, I don't think it had any effect on it. I, I thought, um, you know, we had a couple over and back turnovers, like just, you know, concent just, just a couple of concentration turnovers. We dribbled into traffic a couple times. Zach was loose with the basketball. You know, you, you, we work a lot with him on a crouch dribble just because he's so damn big. You know, that ball's coming up high if he's standing straight up. And then, you know, he let Middlebrooks, you know, poke it from behind. But um, I also think a lot of it had to do with NC State. I think they're a good defensive team. I think they put a lot of pressure on the basketball. They make it tough on you. But I, I didn't think the environment um, had anything to do with that. I thought it was NC State's defense and at times our lack of concentration. Coach, you move up front, front row, Zach. Zach Brazil in your post. Matt, I, I'm sure you've been asked this a lot, but what what characteristics do you think you guys have that's enabled basically the same team to rebound the way you have this year right. after last year? Yeah, you know, we, um, we've we added some pieces. Lance Jones is a piece that's really helped us. I thought his defense tonight on DJ Horn was really good. You know, the moment wasn't too big for him. You know, he took the shots that were there for him and, and be able to knock him down. So the addition of that... You know, we got the best player in the country. You know, it's a hell of a place to start, right? So, like, a lot of times people are congratulating you, and it's like, you know, he's pretty damn good. But you got to have the right pieces with him from a skill standpoint and then still be able to guard elite players. And I think we're just better in those areas. Like, we had guys step up tonight and shoot the – like, us going 10 for 25, that's our average. We, we, we shoot 40% from three. So, like, now if we can have games where we can get more – and then shoot a better percentage, you know, you know, that really helps him. You know, we got to do a better job of helping him. He turned it over tonight. Braden turned it over tonight. So we didn't give ourselves a great chance there. And that's what you want. You want that complete game, you know, and I think that's where we've been able to adjust. We haven't turned the ball over as much, even though tonight we had more than 13. So we're now 7-4 and four when we have 14 to 17 turnovers. But we're 27-0 and 0 when we have 13 or less. So, like, getting that, keeping that number down. And why you got to, like, jump on that and, like, you know, have such a magic number. But it doesn't mean we can't win when we have more than 13. But so far we haven't gotten beat when we've had 13 or less. Up front to the left, Fanta. Matt John Fanta, Fox Sports. Zach Eady uh, has become the first player in the NCAA tournament's history to have 20 and 10 while shooting at least 60% from the floor in five games in a single tournament. Uh, a lot of times on this stage, we sometimes see the best, the best players could get phased or could get rattled. Right. It feels like nothing does that to him. What are you just continually seeing from this person? Right. Well, I thought they did a good job tonight. I thought they battled him. They pushed him out some. They made it difficult on him. They forced him into five turnovers. But he still got to his spots. You know, and if he can get to a spot for his jump hook or he can get it at the rim, like he didn't have a lot of dunks, kind of easy ones tonight. He had to earn almost everything, whether he was going to his left hook or his right hook and, and just continue to play and continue to compete. But it, it's really about running things and getting in that position. If he can get there, he's had a lot of success. It doesn't guarantee he will, but the, the numbers kind of show that once he gets there and gets settled, he's, he's been pretty successful. On the left side, Jerry. Hi, Jerry Palm, CBS. Braden Smith obviously had a very rough first half, didn't hit any shots, turned the ball over a lot. What kind of adjustments do you make at halftime with him to try and get him back on track? Yeah, not really adjustments as much as just try to be encouraging, you know, to tell him, like, you know, two of those turnovers are over and backs. So, like, he hasn't done that the whole year. So, like, you don't know if it's just, like, you got jitters or the anxiety a little bit of just, you know, being out there. But, you know, to me, you, you can't dribble across half court and stop. Right? You, have, you can't go the other way. And so right as you're two feet and the ball gets across half court, like, you know, and so he's a you know, quintessential point guard. He runs the show for us. So just trying to, you know, get him in with good spirits and just like, hey, go out and play your game. Do like when we run stuff, just like be aggressive. Like look for your shot. Keep shooting. And um, but no adjustments, really. Obviously, he didn't turn the ball over the second half, you know, so that was good. And we rely a lot on him. So when he has, he has a little bit of struggles, it's easier for him to get out of it because he stays out there. He plays through his mistakes. I want to congratulate Coach Painter, and thank you, Coach, for joining us here in the main interview room. See you back again tomorrow. All right. Thank you.